Well, hello there. Okay, so today we're going to do a 10 stitch blanket. No pearls and very easy to do. Easy even for a beginner or a person to do their first 10 stitch blanket. Now the stitch we're going to use is called Intertwined Owl Stitch. And I named it that because I'm putting together two of my owl stitches to make it good for a 10 stitch blanket but uh, it's a great stitch for a scarf or in the round or anything you want to do um, it looks really nice and uh, yarn I'm using is charisma and the color huh, I thought I would remember but I gotta look it up lakeside <laughs> the color is lakeside I don't have a label, but I did write down what the color was. Okay, the loom. This is from the Doris loom set. Um, it's a three-quarter inch loom. It's a little smaller, perhaps, than three-quarter inch, because as they got smaller, they went closer together, but um, that's what it is. And this yarn, the Charisma yarn, is a bulky yarn, but you could do this with a with a smaller gauge loom and a thinner yarn if you want or you could do, use two strands of a number four on a three quarter inch loom like this so what i've done is i've got the 10 pegs i'm going to do this one 10 pegs but you could definitely do from five up to as, as wide as you want actually for 10 stitches they don't have to be 10 stitches and i'm going to do a corner a stitch for the edge on both sides so I've put one and two together I just used a stitch marker that they use for needles and it's very very stretchy and I just kind of figurated it over the two but any any way you have of marking two pegs on either end okay so then I'm just going to take this and you can use any cast on you want I'm just going to use the chain cast on um, just because I like that cast on but it doesn't really matter what cast on you do you'll be picking it up later in the blanket so you can do an e-wrap cast on if you'd like no problem and um, let's get this to keep this from slipping okay so now I'm just going to I put the slip knot on there I'm going to put my hook in here and scoop up the yarn and I'm just going to do a, a crochet chain type of cast on without a crochet hook and I just pull that tight so that loop doesn't get too big and put the loop behind peg three and the working yarn through. Put it behind peg four, working yarn through. So that's all there is to this one, but you can use any cast on you want. It doesn't matter. And the same with casting off anything you're really comfortable with, a stretchy one or a very loose basic one. When you're done, whoops, <laughs> went too far. <laughs> so you go up to there and here you have the loop and <laughs> get the loop back here. And then you just pop it over the last peg. And then I'm just going to knit that off. And there we are, we're casted on. So I'm going to start the first row, which is Owl Eye. And so I'm just going to knit over this one, the last peg, and the second last peg. And i got to move that down to the bottom. There we go. Like that in the U-wrap. And then we're going to take this and we're going to wrap the next two over that. Okay. And then whatever peg we're at, the other way to think of doing owl eye is whatever peg you're at is peg one, and you're going to wrap peg one and two. And you're going to keep it loose. That's all there is to it. So there you are. You're on peg one. You're going to wrap peg one and two. You're on peg one. You're going to wrap peg one and two. You're on peg one. You're going to wrap peg one and two on peg one. You're going to wrap peg one and two on 
and then you're going to go all the way to the end like that wrap over these two now the reason these two are marked is we're always going to do them in owl eye so they'll be our edge they'll always be done in owl eye so we're at the end we go over peg one and two just like that and we do our second wrap on peg two and then we're ready to start the next stitch on number three peg so we're going to take the working yarn and we're going to do this is the twisted owl stitch we're going to go behind peg three wrap it in an e-wrap knit it off then we're going to come back around in front and do a u-wrap and knit it off okay that's all there is to it get a little bit closer here so we're going to come behind the funny this loom this peg is leaning more forward we're going to come behind do an e-wrap knit it off come back in front knit that off okay behind do an e-wrap and keep your stitches fairly loose because if you pull this really tight it's going to be hard to knit this off right so keep it fairly loose here and just knit that and it comes really easy right over so e-wrap come back around knit it e-wrap knit it off come back around knit it over e-wrap knit it off come back around knit it over and then we're here so we're going to come into an e-wrap or u-wrap knit it off come over this peg over peg one and two here and knit them always doing owl eye on the corner come back over and keep your corner edges nice and loose because they'll be easy to pick up if you find you're getting too tight you can loosen them right you just come loosen it loosen it you can loosen it, things as much as you want to so you want to keep the nice tension that's even on your edges we knit them both off and then we come and do the second wrap on peg two and the next wrap on this one when we're going this way and we go over peg one and two on peg one over one and two we're on peg one over one and two we're on peg one over one and two on peg one we go over one and two we're on peg one we go over one and two and then we just go over one and two at the end here we come back around keeping it nice and loose and we knit those and we just put the one wrap over here and then we're ready to start this row and this row and we're going to the left you can do it the other way too whatever way if you're left-handed or right-handed and you knit the opposite direction you can go either way Okay, so on peg three, I'm going to do an E-wrap, knit it over, come back, knit it over, E-wrap, knit it over, come back around in front, knit it over, E-wrap, knit it over, come back in front, knit it over, E-wrap, knit it over, back in front, knit it over, e-wrap, knit it over, back in front, knit it over, e-wrap, knit it over, back in front, knit it over, over here do the u-wrap, come back around over one and two, come back over, And come back over one and two when you're going this way we're doing out a lot of the whole distance
And I guess we could take a little peek at the stitch. I don't know if we've done enough to really see it, but I'm just going to come back around wrapping these two. And uh, we can take a look. And uh, I don't know if there's enough there for you to really see it, but it's really nice textured stitch. Yeah, I think we need more for the camera to really pick it up. We'll do a little bit more and take a look, but we can look at the other side too. And the other side of the blanket is going to look really nice. It has all these little loops. It's really quite pretty. So both sides of your blanket will look nice, but we'll go a little further along and take a look at this. Maybe like this you can see it better. No, not really. Just not enough for you to really see it yet. Okay, so when we're going this way, it's the E wrap. And then a U wrap. E wrap. And then the U wrap. And that's all there is to it. Just the two stitches. I'll just get to the end of the row and um, oh, I don't want to split the yarn. And we come over here, do the U wrap, wrap over peg one and two. Come back over one and two this way now that we've turned and I'll lie back. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going for a little while till I get it a little bit longer and we can take a look at it. And how long you're going to be is the shape you want. So if you do a square, you're going to get a blanket that just keeps growing into a square. If you want it for a double bed, whatever shape that is uh, of the bed, you're just going to do it smaller like that, and it will keep growing in that exact same shape. Um, if you're going to do a queen, same thing. Basically, there, that's all there is to it. I'm not going to tell you rows because everyone knits different, and when you have a stitch that's longer like this one is, Depending on how thick your yarn is, how tight your stitch is, rows aren't going to tell you exactly how long and and how big your swat your uh, initial piece is going to be. So it's just a lot better to go for the shape that you want, and that's the shape you'll get. How many rows did I, did I do? Well, if you look at it, you can actually count the rows. I think it's easier to count on this side. But there's one, two, three, four, five. So I did five. I'm coming back. So it's the beginning of row six, coming back. And that's how far I got. So. There you go. So, okay, I'm going to knit it for a little while and then we'll catch back up and take a look at the stitches. Okay, so I've gotten a little further along and now you can see the stitch better. So, there's what it looks like there. A little bit more in focus there. A little harder to see it with all the colors in here, but this kind of shape right here is what it is. Got shapes like this all the way down. There you can, it's better to see it there. See where it's all the same color, these shapes coming down. That's what your stitch looks like. That's really nice uh, for a blanket. It's laying nice and flat. There's what your cast on looked like if you did this one, but it's not going to matter. We're going to be picking it up. And then your sides. 
look like that. Hard to see them too in all the colors, but it's a nice tight side and uh, it'll be easy to have pick up stitches and I'll show you how to do that. So you just keep going until you get it the length you want and uh, depending what you're what you're making if you're making a blanket do it a blanket shape i'm considering making it kind of like a blanket um, shawl kind of idea for me because i really really like the color i like this stitch oh the other side i really like the other side I'll show you what the other side looks like there you can focus So I'm thinking I'm going to do it like a blanket shawl. So what I'm going to do is make it fairly long. And then when I go around it, I'll stop when it gets to um, how I want my blanket shawl to be. So I'm going to have it for a personal blanket shawl. I just love all the shades of blue in this color. But uh, you're going to be doing whatever you, you want to make for what you particularly want to make. You just go for the shape you want. If you want to make a blanket shawl, you'll be doing it similar to the length that I'm going to go. So I'm just going to keep going for a little while. And um, when I've got the length I want, we will catch back up. So we will see you in a while. Well, hello. Okay, here we are back, and I've got the length I want. And if you're doing a blanket, you're certainly not going to go this long. You're going to be more like this for most blanket shapes, or maybe a little longer, depending on your bed shape. But because I'm going to do a scarf shawl, I wanted this to be roughly three times lo uh, longer than it is wide, because that would be the um, 20 by 60 size of shawl. I want mine to be a tiny bit longer. So this measures four inches, just a little tiny bit over four across here. And up here, I'm measuring almost 14 in length. So that's going to be good for me. And because I am four across, that tells me I'm going to need two panels on either side um, to reach my 20 inches across. So I'll be... Um, coming and going around and then going around another time and that's how I'll get my shawl out of it. If you're doing the blanket you've got a smaller piece here but you'll be doing it exactly the same and you'll go around as many times as you need to to get as big as you want. So it's that easy and um, now you can see the pattern on a bigger piece. It's a really pretty pattern show you from different angles. I know with the color it's harder to see it, but I did like how it looked in this yarn. It really looks nice. I really like it. And then the other side, it's going to be fully reversible because the other side is really pretty. So I'll be able to reverse the shawl, which is why I decided to make a shawl because I'll have two shawls in one. There. There you can see more what the stitch looks like on this side. It's really, really pretty, and I really like it in this yarn. So the blanket's going to look really nice on both sides. I was deciding what kind of a ridge I was going to have, and I've decided that I'm going to have very, very little ridge. So I'm going to do a Tamsin join on here, and that way it'll look really nice on both sides for a shawl. So... That's what I'm going to do, but I'll show you how you do the ridge as well. Okay, so I started here on my row that I'm going to start doing the corners because now that we've gone this far, we want to do the corners. Now, when you're doing a corner on one of these scarves, and I'm just going to um, turn it around here so you can see better what I'm going to explain to you. Now, when we do it the first time, we're going to have to do corner part one and corner part two two times. So we'll go corner one, corner two, corner one, corner two again. And the reason for that is we're coming up here. We're going to turn and turn goes this far. And then we're going to have to turn again that far because we have to come down this side. And then after that, 
we only have to turn once each time because we're coming down this side we only turn once coming to here we only turn once so we'll only be turning once so only we'll be doing our corner one and two only one time for the rest of the project it's just this first time we have to do the set of two twice okay so I hope that explains that to you so I'm going to do the last stitch We're going this direction and then I'm going to come over and do the owl eye corner and I'm going to do the one stitch come over one and two and this will be the first peg of our short corner and we're going to do a German short corner which is the only kind I do on a blanket I don't like the the, um, the turning when lifting up the yarn it just leaves you with a really noticeable corner I don't like that I really like the German but you're welcome to do the other corner if that's what you learn that's what you like doing so I knit it all I have to do now is pull it over pull it over and I'm just pulling it over until I can see a V forming and I'm gonna have to open it up because it's such a fuzzy yarn <laughs> charisma there <laughs> we can see the V on the green peg there's a V right in here so the V goes this way. It's like a lesser than sign. <laughs> Sideways V. But there you go. And you should see that green going to about the middle of the peg or the, or the peg under. You're pulling it so it goes right over the middle of the peg. And then you're going to come back doing your normal stitch. So after we've pulled this, we're going to do our, this is one of our two pegs here. So we do the owl eye. And we're just going to come back. And that's our first peg. Now, some of you are going to say, well, because you haven't lifted it up and you don't see those strands, are you going to not, are you going to miss that that's the peg that you're doing the short row on? No, you're not because it's very tight. You try to knit that over, you're going to go, what's going on? And you'll know you're trying to knit over that. Plus, you can see, I usually open up these V's so I can see them really well. This one might not open so well. It's a little thicker right here because I added in some yarn. I needed more yarn so otherwise it would be showing better too and so I'm just going to owl eye back and so we're doing our corner part one <laughs> get that over and we're doing our corners just in the same stitches we were using coming all the way back remembering to keep these loose on the loose side make it a lot easier for you to knit them over and we're coming back in the owl eye on our two marked pegs and then just wrapping the second one twice and then we're going to start the stitch we're going this way we do the e-wrap and then over with the e-wrap so I'm just going to knit my way down to the second last end peg and add it to the short row Whoop. okay the next peg is a corner peg so we're just going to go over it knit it over pull it into a V and there you go I've opened up the V so you can see it better here because there was only one strand there and that's what it looks like with the German short row then I'm over here and we're coming back in the owl eye and uh, a little tight there but that's because I added in yarn and so now we're past where I've added in yarn so I didn't want any knots in in this so I added in yarn method with no knots okay
Now we're going to go down and add in the next peg into the short row. And I'm going to show you how we do one of these. Okay, so when we get to this one, we're just going to do a U-wrap over it and pull it into the short row and then come back. And so we have the V here. So that's how we add in one of those pegs. Okay, now we're going to come up, add in the next one into the short row. Like I say, if you need to, you can slow down the video. But by now you should know these stitches really well. Okay, so this is the next one to add in. So we just go over it in a U-wrap, pull it into the German corner, so we get that nice V. This one is particularly fuzzy and doesn't want to show the V very well, but there it is. <laughs> Got it. See, there's the V in there. And then we just come back. So we're going to keep doing that until we get down to there. So I'm just going to put you on pause so we keep this video a reasonable length and uh, we will catch up in just a bit. Okay, so here I am. I'm about to add this peg in. I'll just add it into the short row, give it a tug, and then we're coming back. So here's what we how we finish off the corner part one. So we just do the owl eye stitch, we come back, this is the next peg that we're going to short row. And so we short row it and then knit over. Okay, now we're going to add it back in. So here's where we start our corner part two. So we've done the short row, now we're going to add all the pegs back in. So this is the part two. So we knit over to pick up this peg. We're going to knit it over, knit it over, and then we're just going to come back. And then we're going to come back again. Huh. Saren seems to have a knot in it. Now it's too late for me to take it out now, so I'm just going to leave it in. I don't think you'll ever notice it in this stitch. Okay, uh, I forgot what I did here when I noticed that little knot there. I don't know how I missed a knot in it. Yeah, well, it's very tiny, whatever it is, so. Okay. And then we do our second wrap here. Now we got to pick this up. So there's different ways we can pick it up. And when I did all my practices, I decided the way that gave it the nicest corner was to just pick it up in a U-wrap and then come back. And then we get these two. We start in the right stitch now for this one because it's back in the mix. But for picking up, we're just going to pick it up with the U-wrap and then come back with the U-wrap. 
And then we're going to do owl eye the rest of the way. And that's all there is to that. And we just keep doing that. We can take a little quick peek at our corner to see what it looks like. So this is the point of the corner here. That's hard to t tell on this dark yarn, isn't it? But here's the point. We came up here, turned the corner here. So here's where the corner is turning. And we're coming in here. And this is the stitches being added in. And as you see, there's no hole. That's hard to see on this. So we'll see more as we go along because it's so dark. But there's no, they pull it stitches. There's no hole here like you get with some of those methods. Just, uh. Looks like part of the pattern, but we'll look more at it later. I could have picked a lighter yarn that would show better, but I wanted to make a shawl out of this color. <laughs> so this is the color you get for this video, but I promise it'll be easier to see things when we get down to some of those lighter colors. Okay, so now we're going to knit these two in the pattern and pick up this one right here. So, and then we're picking this one up. Just pick it up and come back. So basically just treating it like an end peg when we pick it up. And we come back and we're going to pick up the next one. And then this, you get do your stitch, you do the E wrap, you come over it front, knit it over. And we're going to pick up this peg next. And now we're into some lighter color. Oh, these blankets really, really, they're not hard to do. So the first thing, it's the corners and the sides that most people need the most help on. So this is the corners we're doing now. And I'm going to do my best to, oops, explain it to you really well. Now, and this goes into the pattern. And we're picking up the next stitch right here. And coming back. Now at this point, I'm just going to put you on pause because this takes a while and uh, we'll get back when we get right to the end there. Okay, so now here we are and I'm just about to go down and pick up the last peg. So this one's part of the pattern. So I knit it like this. And then I come down on one of the last two pegs, which is an owl. I come over, pick up the last peg. That's the big thick one. <laughs> and then knit it over. And then we just come back in the owl eye all the way to the beginning. And this is the very last row of our corner part two. And we'll take a look at it. In a minute. Just get back down here. Oh, 
Okay, so here's what we did. Here's the piece going up here. We did our corner part one and part two, which made us turn the corner like this. And now we've got, uh, it's kind of just top the top of it. Now we have to turn the corner this way. So this is the only time we have to do it a second time, but we have to do our corner part one and our corner part two again. But let's take a good look at our corner. And it's just a really nice corner. There's no holes or anything in it. Yeah, you can see it more on here. It's just a nice piece. And then we can look at the other side. As I say, it's going to be fully reversible. And here's what your corner looks like. And it looks really beautiful on this side too. And we do one of the corners we do is sure to be in a lighter fabric so you can see it better but it's just a really nice corner with no holes in it no ridges on the corner which a lot of times you get with some of the pickups or you get holes so i really like the german corners and they go really nice with these stitches so just have a beautiful corner you can't even really tell that you did any kind of corner it just looks like you're doing a square blanket Okay, so now we start to do the corner part one and two again. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go down, pick up this one, bring it back, and do the same thing um, again. The corner part one, the corner part two. If you need to watch it again, you can uh, rewind the video and watch me do the corner part one and part, corner part two. But I'm just going to go ahead and do corner part one and corner corner part two again and then I'll have another piece here and we'll be ready to go down the side and I'll explain to you how to do the sides so we'll catch up then okay so here I am and I've done the second set of corner one and two that we do just this one time so that's attached there I'm flipping it over so you can see so I came down here turned the corner to go this way and came down here on the second corner so now we need to be attaching this side as we go down and coming down here so what we're going to do is find the holes that we're going to pick up and um, i probably have an easier time showing you on this light part so if you pull it out and you just put your fingers in here you'll see that there are holes see there's one there's another there's another there's another there's another and this is what we'll be picking up and if you if I put my finger right in the hole you see there's two strands those are the strands we're going to be picking up I go into another hole you see there's two strands here go into another one you see that there's two strands here okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark where we pick up so if I go into the hole here that's closest to the work where the two strands are I can see I'm pulling on the work now on the first one you can go ahead and put that one on it doesn't make much difference and then um, go down to the next one I like to put it on right away make it tighter where we turn so you just find the two loops and it's dark and then I'm just going to put a stitch marker in them and there's a good reason to put the stitch markers in because when you go around you'll find that you get quite far away from where you're going to pick up and then the next one I'll put another stitch marker in and I'm just going to mark a few of them as I go down also because it's a darker yarn right here it's harder to see now they've got these little bright red stitch markers and I go to find the next one and there's the two loops. You can see the two loops here. I'm just picking them up in the stitch marker. And I'm just going to mark down to where it gets lighter. 
but if you have trouble finding where the pickup stitches are, you can mark the whole side. And then I'm going to go down the side. We're going to turn the corner and then we're going to go this way. So I'm going to mark the first stitch over here. So how I do that is I'll be picking up stitches all down the side. So we're in the holes and we're picking up those stitches and we're going all the way down until we find this last one with the two, the two loops there and then this is the corner and then the first stitch on the other side that has the two loops will be the first one we pick up after the corner. So I put the stitch marker in there and I can also come around and mark that one too. I like to mark them right away and now you have a little pink one. <laughs> so you find the last stitch you'll be picking up on this side and it's this one. There's the two yarns. And here's the first one around the corner. There's the tail and the cast on. And so I'm just going to put a stitch marker in there. So then that's all done. And I could come and do this one too, but what I'm going to do is do that off camera so I can shine a bright light on it so I can really see where it is. Oh, I think I found it anyway. Because, yeah, it's pretty dark, but there it is. I found it, so I'm just going to mark it. And then they're all marked. I don't have to worry about them for a while. But it's really helpful to mark them because after you pick up the stitch, it's going to stretch it like this and it makes it harder to see where the stitches are when they're right on, on there. And then I'm just going to make sure I have the right one on this. I'm just going to put you on pause because I'm having trouble seeing with that dark yarn. Okay. Yeah, I made sure I got it on and got both stitches. And so I got both the stitches here. So what we're going to do is I finished my complete corner two. So I'm just going to put this loop and I just use, I just pull the stitch markers to put it on. It's really easy. And I'm just going to put this loop on the last peg like that. Okay. And the rest are marked. So we know what to do next. And now that it's on there, I can just take the stitch marker right off. I don't need it on there anymore. And then we're going to come down and just do our stitch. And I've already done down to here, so we just do the stitch that we do going this way. And I'll go over the two different ways you can pick that up depending on the look that you want on your project. Okay, now this is an owl eye stitch. And we'll do the second wrap. So I can show you what to do here. Now, what you would do if you want to have a blanket that has the ridges, the raised ridge all the way around, like some 10 stitches do, you're going to take this whole thing off. But what I'm going to do is use a Tamsin join. And thank you, Tamsin, for giving me permission because I love this join. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just knit over. this first one. Then I'm going to put the yarn over and knit over the second one. And what that's going to do is just going to minimize how big the ridge is that we're picking up. And now that's going to drop down and just going to snug it up and come back. And we come back doing the owl eye stitch. Now what I do when I'm about three pegs up here is I already put the new yarn on so I don't forget to do that. So I come down and I find the new one. It's on the stitch marker and I just put it on. 
and I just keep going back. back and just keep doing the stitch And then this one is out line. And we're just going to do the two stitches right on here. I'm going to take off the stitch marker. Okay, and then I'm going to knit this one off. And then I'm going to take the yarn, put it over, and knit this one off. There we go. And then I'm going to come back. I didn't want to go there. <laughs> and then I'm down about here. And I put on the next one. And so I just keep doing that, going all the way down, picking up all these places until we do the last one right here. And then we're going to do a corner one and two and turn the corner and pick up that one. So um, I'll just put you on pause, work my way down there. Because as you see, we just keep going, going all the way down. And we'll come take a look when I'm a little further along. Okay, so I've gone a little further along. We can take a look at it. Now you can see the corners really well. And the really beautiful corner. See, there's no holes. Just a really, really nice corner. The German corner makes a really, really beautiful corner. So, no, because we can see it very good on the dark, but it makes a really, really beautiful corner. And then we're going to come over here. And uh, this is where we're attaching it up here and it's just a really nice flat join you can barely see it but yes it is hard to see on the dark color but it's a nice flat join it's working really well with this stitch and um, it looks nice on the other side too. So I'm going to show you how to pick up these side stitches that don't have stitch markers in, but you're welcome, of course, to put stitch markers all along. I'm not going to bother here because I can see the stitches. So you're going to look for what you put on next. And you're going to see that the next one is right here. But we don't want that one because if you pull on it gently, you'll see that it's actually pulling on the stitches on there. So it's attached. So we go to the next one. And that's the one we put on. If we had a stitch marker, a stitch marker would be there. But as you see, it's quite a distance from the peg. And this is why a lot of people get mixed up and pick up the wrong stitch. So you can, if you have the stitch markers in, you'll always pick up the right stitches. But I'm going to show you how to do it when you don't have it marked. Go down. This one we can't take because it's attached to that. The next one with the two strands. And you put the two strands on. 
Okay, and um, now when I come down here, I can take both of these off, this one off first and then that one off. But I could also do it now. I could just put take the one. And that holds it on too. So however you want to do it, it will work fine. Then we're just going to do the stitch. As we go down. And then we're at the last two pegs, so that's owl eye. So we're going to owl eye this one. And do it again. And then we're going to knit over this because we already flipped the one over. So we're just going to knit this one over and come back. And then when I get to around here, I'm going to put the new one on. So to put the new one on, I go down and there's the first hole here. And I don't want to put this first hole on that's here because that's attached to this. And I can see that if I pull on it. So it's the next one. And I put it on. And then I'm just going to knit it over now. Because it holds the strands on really good. And I'm going to continue with my way back down to the beginning in the owl eye stitch. And then anchor it right here. So I'm just going to keep doing that. And as you see, we're getting quite a bit further down here. It's all being joined. The bigger blanket already. And uh, when, we, when I get all the way down and I'm getting close to ready to turn my corner, we'll catch up and we'll do the corner together. Okay, so I will see you in a little while. Okay, now. So... I've got up here and all I have to do now is put the last stitch before the end and I did put a stitch marker in so you could see better. There's a stitch marker in the last stitch here. This last stitch we pick up and then we're on to the other side and you can as you can see the corner is right in between the two. Last stitch pick up and the first one. So we just put this one on. And then that's holding the place for after the corner. Okay, so then all we're going to do is I'm just going to knit this over right away to help hold it down on the loom. And uh, we're just going to go down and pick that last one up. And whoop, we're a little bit high there. <laughs> Okay, just this. There we go. Testing it better. Okay. And then we're just going to get this. There. Adjust that just a little bit better. And then we come up to the owl eye pegs. And we knit over this last one. Okay. 
So then all we do is knit back. Get myself some more yarn here. There we go. I always just come back like this because this help, help, helps hold everything and make sure I've done all the stitches on that peg. Now we're going to do our corner one and two and then that'll bring us up and then we just have to come and pick up this side. This is the first stitch. We pick up all the way down to the last stitch which would be right here and then there's your first stitch. And so if you want to, you can mark your last stitch as well, or just um, pick them up as you go. And this is the first one. So <clears throat> we do our corner one and two, and then we'll be picking up that side. <coughs> Sorry there. And we'll just keep going around that same way. I don't know why I got a frog in my throat. I'm just going to clear that up. Just hold on a second. There. Huh. Hopefully it's a bit better now. So yes. We're just going to do our corner one and two. We'll come along here, do corner one and two. Then we'll be picking this one up, connecting this edge down to here, corner one and two, connecting this edge. And we just keep going around and around and around and letting it get bigger. Now let's take a look at what it looks like now. Here's your join right here. It's a nice flat join. I did get more light <laughs> so you'd be able to see a little better. I got some more light happening here. And then... Um, you can see this is nice and flat and there's your join and I showed you the other method if you wanted to have a big ridge there but I wanted uh, for sure this is going to be a shawl I just wanted it to be nice and smooth so there's how it's looking so we'll just continue down here and start our short row and all you do is your corner one and two. We only did it the two times because we have to do that at the beginning because you're making two turns. But from now on, we only make the one turn, so it's only one corner one and two. Corner part one and two would be a, be a better way to be saying that. So if you've forgotten how to do your corner one and twos, you can always scroll back to that place where I showed you how to do them because I'm not going to show you how to do the whole corner. The video will get really, really long and it will take so long to load onto YouTube. <laughs> Way too long. So just come along and then you just tug it into the V. And look at this, we have light color. You can just see the V, really good here. There's your V. I always keep that one quite tight there because I wanna have a nice tight corner. And so that's all there is to it. We're just going to do our corner one and two. And then we'll go down and pick up that side. So then I'll be just going down and picking up this peg up and just the way we do the corner part one and the corner part two. And um, I'm just trying to think of the easiest way to see it. But what will happen is our corner will build like this and turn this way. And then we'll be able to pick up this side here. 
So we'll do our corner part one, our corner part two, and I'll catch up with you again and we'll do this side. Okay, we'll see you in a few. Okay, so here we are and I've done the corner one and two, part one, part two. So here we go. I have it here and it's uh, attached there. It looks like that. And so if we look at it from this side, you can see how this blanket is going, right? We came here, we did a corner one, corner part two. We came up here, only do corner part one and two once here. Here we had to do it twice. Here we only do it once because what we're going to do now is come and pick up this stitch and attach it. So now that I've done the corner, and after I did the corner, I came all the way back up here, about to come back down so I can pick up the first stitch, which is right here, and put it on the loom. And then I'll just take the stitch marker out of it because we don't need it anymore. And uh, <laughs> there, get this down. So we only have the stitches here and I'm just going to knit this one over now like that to hold it because remember we do it in two parts and we just do our stitch and I'll just uh, zoom in a little bit now that we're doing this wrong way there we go so we're just going to come around do the twisted owl stitch and work our way down. Yarn seems to want to split. like my yarn split somewhere so I'm just going to take this off and see what happened there. There we go. We keep that yarn together. There we go. Okay, and then we just go over this last stitch using a U-wrap and come back. And we're doing an owl eye back. So I go to the third usually, that, and then find the next stitch. And I haven't marked them, so but I know how to find them because there's the one that's connected to there, so I go down to the next one. And there it is, and there's my two strands. And see, it looks quite far down. That's why I say it's, it's good when you're first doing it to use stitch markers. And then I just put that on, and I'm just going to knit that over right now. Then it's done. And whoop, <laughs> we're coming back in owl eye. Okay, and actually, uh, it's a good place to pause it because the video is getting really long. So we're just going to be picking up the stitches all the way down. Here's where we cast on. So the last stitch is right here. These two stitches right here. Once we pick up those, we do a corner one and two. And then we pick up this after the corner one and two. So I'll meet you up when we get there. And we'll see you in a few. Okay, so I've done that. I've joined it so you can see. I'm just going to zoom back out because we're looking at the whole blanket here. Okay, so now you can kind of see <laughs> we have, we're back to 
this long rectangular shape that I started with. And um, we'll take a look at the joins. So here's where we joined. We came up here and then we turned and we're joined here onto here. So here, here's the join. It's still nice and flat here. Now it's hard to see it, but there it is coming up here. So down there and going up there. And so that's where we joined. And here is where we started. There's the yarn from our cast on. So now that I've done the corner one and two, and then I, part one and two, and then I've joined this and we're back up to the corner, we need to do another corner one and corner part two. And then we'll be picking this up right after. And then we'll be attaching all down here, all the way down. To the last corner over here doing another corner one and two and then we'll be picking that up and continuing to move around and I've already marked the last corner we did with that stitch marker I'd taken out so then all you'll do with this is weave it in after anytime you've gone along enough you can just weave it in so now we do corner part one and two and then we'll pick this up and uh, Go all the way down there and you know the basics already you know what you're doing here and you know how to do the to do the blanket so um, I hope you enjoyed learning how to make the blanket and uh, it, it's quite a pretty stitch it looks quite nice on this side too and that's that's it. That's the stitch. That's how to do the blanket. We'll just be doing that and going around and around and around. Okay, so here I am and uh, I did the corner one and two there, came down connecting the side and now we're back to our basic shape and just going right down the corner, corner one and two, turn. So there you go. Um, then this is, we'll finish off the video because you know just how to do it. When you come to the end or when you come to any end, you can just bind it off when you've got it long enough and you can use the, the stretchy bind off that I have on my channel or you can use a basic bind off if you're very loose with it or any bind off that you like to finish it off when you've got it the length you need. And okay, I hope you enjoyed the video and until next time, Bye.